What is up everybody? This is Lyle No Hippie Trucking and Transportation. I am still coming at you from the Sitgo in Kalamazoo, Michigan, US 131 exit 4. Uh, don't pick up till tomorrow, at least that's what I'm supposed to, but uh, I'll call them a little later today and see if the load is ready. Now I'm parked over here at the Sitgo, not just because I'm all about the off-brand truck stops and all that, but I'm Bobtail, and I just felt that it would be easier for me to kind of tuck in over here as opposed to taking a real spot from somebody over there. Now, this truck stop does have 4.5 stars on Trucker Path as opposed to the 4.1 at the Loves Across the Street, so uh, do with that as you will. But this place over here probably has about 15 spots to my left that are diagonal pull-through spots. There's about 15 spots that are diagonal back-end spots behind me. Then there's a dirt area that could probably hold about seven to 10 trucks. So nice little place uh, if you're in the area. And if you want it quiet, I mean, this place is very quiet. Uh, what I want to talk about today is my ex uh, experience at Prime with my fleet manager. Now, one of the reasons I'm gonna do this video is one of my boys that left uh, Prime just did a video and you know he had kind of mentioned my fleet manager and some of the issues that he had with with him and you know this isn't a hostage video or anything like that where you know I'm being forced to do anything but I did feel like I should at least express what my feelings are now everybody's gonna have their own, you know, experience with their fleet managers, right? Uh, I've talked to people that have had fleet managers that they say they don't like that, uh, you know, the majority of the people that I talk to like, which is kind of similar in this case. So, one thing I've always preached since the very beginning, and even before I even came into trucking, was personal relationships. Now that has nothing to do with kissing ass or anything like that. Uh, it, it really comes down to building relationships and those relationships have to be equitable. Now when I'm mentioning this stuff, I'm not saying that what anybody else said about the fleet manager is wasn't that I'm just saying the way I've looked at it is it has to be equitable you know so what I mean by that is I often talk to people that you know they're always wanting it to be one-sided every load has to pay a certain amount of money you know they have to you know they're not available to help anybody whether it be with a repower or taking a shitty load or whatever. And I've always felt that it needed to be equitable. And one of the things that I've done, and people still, you know, don't believe me, is I don't necessarily see the pay on any of these loads until that load is dispatched. Because I have that much trust in my fleet manager. So, um... Man, I got so much stuff in my head. I'm, I'm like kind of getting to a little brain freeze right now. But uh, my fleet manager, and not just my fleet manager, my entire team, my fleet manager, my payroll lady that I put through probably more than the average person needs to put through just because of how I pay out bonuses and stuff like that to drivers, my logs advisor that basically taught me how to master my logs well or at least give me mastery of my logs you know these are really the reasons that I'm at Prime you know Prime has kind of been in a position of flux I'd say for maybe the last couple of years and you know while some of the things I may not necessarily agree with or like the direction it's going I could always say you know what my fleet manager 
My payroll lady logs in. My logs lady's about to retire. God damn it. I just thought about that. Anyway, my fleet manager primarily and my payroll people are really the glue that binds everything that no, it just binds me to Prime. So, um, while my boy had different opinions and stuff like that in regards to the fleet manager, I can understand that position being true as well, but doesn't influence what my thoughts are about him. So this isn't no rap beef or anything like that where, you know, I, I can't, you know, I'm not 50 cent and I can't like hang out with uh, you because you got a beef with, you know, somebody else. Now I can still have relationships with two people at the same time, even if they're not uh, necessarily in agreement with each other themselves. Basically, just because this guy has a problem with him doesn't mean that I have to cut off either relationship. Now, <clears throat> some of the people I've got calls from, I just got off the phone with one. Uh, well, let me just wrap them all up into one. You know, I don't really go out of my way to fish for referrals or anything like that, and I don't have a problem with anybody that does. As a matter of fact, if you happen to be wanting to come to Prime, all my information is going to be in the description below. <laughs> but listen, I've never gone out of my way to fish for referrals. But one thing I can say is that everybody, for the most part, that's come in under me as a referral has got my fleet manager or people that have trained under me that have gone lease or trained with somebody that was driving one of my trucks has that same fleet manager and for the most part every single one of them has been extremely happy with the situation with my fleet manager now there's going to be some ups and downs that go along with that he's not going to be the one that if you need somebody like put it this way if somebody said you have five people to call and if nobody answers the phone, you're going to die. You're not going to call him because you ain't going to get him on the phone. Like you're going to be there a while trying to get on the phone with him. But that's really the only downside I have to say with him. I absolutely with 100% of my being trust him to do what's best for me. Now that doesn't mean it's not going to be what's better for Prime. So they're, they're two totally different things. There may be, well, let's put it this way. There may be something better, but in the long run, he's never failed me. And I've never, I've never really had an issue with anything. I just got done deadheading like a few weeks ago, like 900 miles. All I did was send a message and say, am I reading this right? You want me to deadhead from here to here? Yes, that's what I'm saying, or whatever it was. Boom. All right, boom. That's what you're saying. I'm out. You know? So, that is the trust that I have in him. Now, what I really want to talk about, for some of you guys that are coming in that are new, is, and it gets missed in businesses like this. If you're coming in from businesses like I came out of, it's going to be more natural to you. But you need to build relationships. Build relationships with people that directly impact you. Your fleet manager, you know, your logs advisor, especially when you're new, logs advisor, uh, payroll lady, you want to have relationships with them, not, you know, everybody complains about being a number. You're only a number if you allow yourself to be a number. You're not a number if every time you go in the terminal, you're stopping down there saying what's up. You know, they know who you are. For the most part, unless, you know, I got this shitty headset right now. But for the most part, if I'm calling in, nobody's asking me what my, you know, they may wonder what truck I'm on, but they know who I am when I call. And that's because I value those relationships. Now, I don't know if, 
Well, you know, I can't say it's just me. Because I could think of people, and I'm just going to mention names off the top of my head, that have my fleet manager. I'm not going to mention their whole name, but Rich, Brandy, um, Jesus, Cr Craig, Man, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. But a lot of the times our conversations, if we're going to have a conversation, is going to be based on, you know, how good we're having it. And I know what it's like to not have a good fleet manager. I talk to a lot of people at Prime, people that have been there from 30 years down to just walked in the building. And I get those messages from fleet managers when they're sending... You know, I get those messages screenshot and sent to me, and I'm like, my fleet manager would have never said that. I don't, you know, and it's constantly, and a lot of the stuff is degrading type stuff that gets sent to people, um, and I've never got that feeling with my fleet manager. So, on one hand, I could look at it and say, you know what, I, I like working with my fleet manager because of the relationship I've built with my fleet manager but I can't even say that because it's not just me it's our fleet in general never gets some of these condescending fleet messages that I see go out and I not only get messages from Prime you know majority come from Prime but I even get some messages sent from other companies that their fleet manager sent out. A lot of that was dealing with bad weather, but that's a different situation. But really, everybody's gonna have their own relationships, okay? Do your best to cultivate those relationships. And if you have seen a video that was put out by anybody else that I'm friends with or that I know whatever does not mean that I have those same feelings about that fleet manager so as a matter of fact I had this conversation with my fleet manager the last time I was in the in the terminal because my fleet manager's often lately done a lot of these ace two classes and I was kind of get the feeling that he was trying to rise up that corporate ladder and I was just like man do not leave you know what I'm saying because you know if you really think about it I mean, Prime's a great company, but it's not Prime that's, that's, that's like directing me every day. It's my fleet manager that's directing me every day. And I'm not sure how I would feel if he was to rise up and I would just get put on with somebody else. Now, I did request, because I do know a couple other good fleet managers that are there. If he does do that, let me, let me know and let me try to see if I can get with somebody I know. But... 100% trust him. Uh, and everybody's not going to mesh together. I personally, you know, here's a good example. And I'm going to wrap this up real quick. Here's an example. I personally would not have a problem with. somebody that would be like overly talkative maybe talk about things you don't necessarily want rough around the edges maybe isn't the most polite person uh, as long you know usually those might be the ones that are doing the job the best I'm just at least from where I come from you know the people that do things by the book and are always polite and all that kind of stuff those weren't the best people and I always understood that and I know this is a different business or whatever but sometimes I just swallow a, you know swallow a shit sandwich uh, because I knew the value of that and 
you know, I don't think that necessarily this business operates the same way, but uh, sometimes personalities don't mesh. But anyway, enough about that. I just wanted to put that out there just because it had popped up a little bit. Uh, people calling, asking questions, shit like that. Uh, yeah. So shout out to my fleet manager, shout out to my payroll advisor, shout out to my logs advisor This retiring. I don't necessarily need her anymore that much, but man, when I was brand new, she was the one that really put in that work, so I appreciate that. Um, and I'm just telling you, build them relationships, because I think is... as the tide turns a little bit I think it's those relationships that are going to kind of help you through the turbulence if, if you understand what I'm saying but uh, that's it I'm about to clean up this truck just a little bit got a chance to go to Walmart I rarely get a chance to do that but I went out there got a few things today might as well get a 34 typically I wouldn't care about a 34 if I was in a, going to an area that I'd like because there's nothing better than being in an area you like low on hours. But since I'm going to Massachusetts, I want to have a full clock so I can get the hell out of there. So my 34 should be up tonight about 11 p.m. So about 9 o'clock, I'll call and check and see if the load's ready. If the load's ready, I'll go ahead and pick it up right when my 34's done and run that out and get out there as soon as I can which is how I do it, you know what I'm saying? I don't do the relaxation shit. I don't stop, I get it there, you know what I mean? Anyway, that's enough about that. I appreciate you stopping by No Hippie Truck and Transportation. As always, comment, subscribe, and I'm out.